Hey everyone, Mango7 Roll here. How we doing today? Welcome to another episode of Epic 7 where I wear a yellow shirt. Not smart. Um, so yeah, uh, we're just gonna talk about Ilniav? Il... What's... Wh how do you pronounce his name? It's Ilyanov? Or is it Ilinov? Because there's no, like, Y-A sound, but I know, like, Y often does, yeah. I don't know. Let me know in the comments how you pronounce it. Uh, anyway, we're going to talk about Ilyanov, and that's pretty much it, I think. Uh, kind of a should you pull, because there's a lot of stuff in the future coming very soon. They promised it has to be happening now. Uh, so let's just take a look at Ilyanov first. And obviously she's somebody we've been waiting for for a while. I think uh, me personally, I wasn't too excited for her. I'm not really a big fan of the characters that are pretty obviously just like, okay, what can we tack this set of boobs onto? Um, which isn't my favorite, but after seeing her animations and stuff, I really love the craziness in her eyes. And now that we know she's voiced by... Uh, Christina Valenzuela, it, it makes me even happier because she's awesome and it fits this personality too, which is great. So let's take a look at her skills here. I haven't refreshed myself on them in a little bit. So uh, let's see, see if we can make this a little bigger too. Does this help? Uh, so attacks the enemy with a spear damage dealt proportion to the caster's max HP. When it's used, if it wasn't triggered by a dual attack, has a 50% chance to use Punish instead of Rush. And of course, it does not uh, trigger a dual attack. Um, one thing I would like on this is if it did trigger a dual attack sometimes, but obviously not when you use Punish instead of Rush. That would be pretty cool. Um, so this is just going to kind of depend on how much damage this does. I, I have a feeling... Punish is going to do quite a bit of damage, right? Because there's no debuff on skill 1. So I have to imagine they're going to leverage that uh, extra, like, stats they have to apply to her skill 1 onto her Punish. Um, there's probably actually multipliers out already for her. So maybe I'm right or wrong there. Somebody can tell me, of course. And of course, Punish here attacks and pierces the enemy, inflicting injuries. Everybody kind of cried a little bit when we saw this. And it also increases the defense of the caster for two turns. That is very important. And uh, damage proportionate to max HP and severity of injuries, max up to 20%. So this is an interesting one because in general, I would say injury, not the most useful ability. In fact, one of the least useful abilities in the game or status effects because nobody ever gets time to stack injury. And the other part is, a lot of uh, injury severities is proportionate to the amount of damage dealt. So, like, when you're bringing injuries into the opponent, the general idea, the feel you get from injury is you want to grind them out, right? But none of the people who really do injury can really grind them out because they don't do enough damage to inflict uh, a severe enough injury, for example. Does that make sense? So, that's always something to worry about. And then, of course, it's always like on one or two abilities, so you might get like 20% if you're lucky. But with Ilyanov here, she has it on her skill two and then 50% chance on her skill one as well. So you could really pile that on pretty quickly, I think. But I still don't think it's going to be too important. That said, I think just the damage Punish is going to do and Rush is going to do combined with keeping herself self-defense buffed permanently, basically, is great. I really do like that. I do not really like her soul burn. I think her soul burn is really unfortunate. Um, it does only cost 10 souls, which is great, but it just feels really bad. I feel like I would almost rather have uh, the soul burn onto her skill one, making it deal more damage and always trigger punish or something like that. Uh, but still 10 souls is is good. Anytime you're, there's a soul burn and it's like this isn't the greatest soul burn. Usually if it's 10 souls, it can still be used greatly. So that's kind of a cool little one-two combination. I'm not sure how good it's going to be, but I guess we will see. Especially since she's fire right now. And you have to consider uh, that she's going up against multiple other incredibly powerful fire bruisers. Specifically people like uh, Ravi, like Carrot like Charlotte, and one thing that they kind of have that she doesn't is 
like more consistent AOE, I guess. Is that right? Because Carrot can kind of like AOE with their with their passive in a way, um, and just get a little bit of extra damage. Whereas uh, she only has the Repel here, which is on a four turn cooldown, so you're not really getting a ton of AOE out of it. So what a Repel does here is it's an AOE attack. It buffs crit damage for everybody on your team and immunity to the caster. So crit damage for the whole team, immunity to herself, damage dealt uh, increases proportionate to the caster's max HP. And another thing here, I, I believe the Soul Burn would be better spent on Repel as well, just so you can kind of cycle through that Im immunity buff uh, much more efficiently, right? So she's going to have immunity for the first couple turns of the battle. And then after that, she's going to have defense buff. And then after that, she'll go back to having immunity. So this is kind of an interesting kit. I, I think it's going to be pretty good, but I just don't know where. I, I feel like it's slotting herself into the same fire type bruiser that we already have a bunch of. And at the same time, I feel like the others are going to kill you and she's going to injure you. So... I'm not quite sure. This is one of those ones that I really think I need to try out and test. I'm not one of those people who will dismiss a unit by reading their kits and saying such and such does it better. I will definitely be trying her out. I will personally be pulling for her. And as for whether or not you should pull for her, let's actually take a look at her artifact first. I forget what this does. It's like crit damage and crit chance, right? Um, increases crit chance by 15% when critical hit is made 20% for the next attack. So. <laughs> this is pretty cool too um but it's kind of weird that I, I mean i guess you get that 15 percent crit chance right off the bat and i like to see what the artifact would do on the character that comes out with it right so for her kit she's gonna have that 15 percent crit right off the bat and i believe she's one of the ones with self crit imprint as well right and she had like obnoxiously high base crit so she had like is she who i'm thinking about with with like 59 percent uh crit base with the artifact i think it was her either way um she's gonna get the base crit from her repel and then from that point on both rush and punish will proc her artifact and that's pretty cool because you can punish somebody and then it will increase the damage of your rush coming up next but you could also rush into punish and do even more damage that way. And you could also, on top of that, um, continuously proc it, right? Because uh, I don't think it's it's not determinant on how many turns you have uh, or turns between. So you can you can rush, do extra damage, proc it. Uh, then punish, do extra damage, proc it. So it's just like consistent extra damage. It just doesn't work on the first turn. And the other thing... I want to kind of talk about too is her comparison to Charles. So if you think about these two skill sets, they're actually kind of similar to Charles, right? Uh, specifically the one two here. And the thing is with Charles, he one twos and uses both at once. And on top of that, uh, he can dispel. So is the Dispel better than the Injury? I think so personally. So that's another thing you need to kind of consider. Take a look at where Charles is sitting. And Charles doesn't have as much competition, I think. So kind of interesting. So whether or not you should summon, um, I personally really like the artifact. I think it's really unique. And somebody will use it somewhere. Even if it's not her, it'll be great somewhere. Uh, the other thing I like about this as well is her design <laughs> everybody likes her right her design is great so i'm personally going to be summoning but you need to remember if you're going to put your bookmarks into ilianav going forward that we do have a collab coming this month it is coming they promised it has to be coming i would expect a collab reveal to be happening on the 9th or the 23rd so Whatever you do, if you're worried about your bookmarks, if you're worried you're not going to have enough for everything, just make sure that you don't go nuts on this character until you wait a little bit. Wait until next week's stream, see what happens and go from there. Because remember, you're not only going to need enough resources for 
uh, Ilniav, you're going to need enough resources for the collab, which might bring more than one character. And then on top of that, you're going to need enough resources for Summer Isaria. And they might even like slap another one on there, right? They might have uh, Araminta with a swimsuit and Super Soaker waiting for us. So be careful is all I'm saying and wait before pulling day one is always the answer. So as for everything else, that's pretty much it to be honest. There are some other things. Maybe there's like a powder shop change or something. No, there's Mort. Uh, they're really releasing Mort again. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this this person has a really good point here. Um, one of the best animations on her skill three, best skill two animation. I do agree with that, I think. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you're going to be summoning for Ilyanav in the comments below. And I'll talk to you all later. Have a great day. Bye, everybody.